okay with the speed? Well, given that we need a full course in 45 minutes, we have to uh, speed up a little bit. I have no idea what the time is. Ah, there's the time. No, that's not the time. That's the number. Where's the... There the time is. Thank you. I hope I'll su <laughs> survive these two hours. <laughs> I, I did sober up since Friday. Please don't misunderstand my... It's, it's due to the other thing that I'm a bit um, out of myself here. One sample confidence intervals, statistics. Now we need to use the probability to do what this course is all about. This course is all about to teach you those basic statistical reasoning uh, approaches that we need to do proper learning from data. And I think I mentioned it last time, the hot shot from Cambridge, uh, Subin Garamani, that was the Jose Asta lecture guest at our university last week, mentioned also that as one of the core things in the current state of art for machine learning is to improve on two things. Oh, I just realized that your nice uh, PF lady, she used the fingers also in her speech, really nice speech last Friday. Um, I don't know if I've learned this from her or I also did it before I saw her speech last Friday. Anyway, it's a good, it's a good, um, <laughs> <laughs> what's the name of, what's the English word for virkemiddel? Well, I'll have to lo learn in my new job. <laughs> anyway, Al although at four she had a problem because she sort of changed the order from those four to the other four. I thought that was a bit in, in but anyway. Um, two things we need to improve in data science, machine learning. The black box problem of machine learning techniques and dealing with uncertainty. So going to big data, machine learning, hardcore crushing of data doesn't take away the basic concept and challenge of being able to quantify uncertainties. When we need to know how often the car, self-driving car, will kill someone, right? That's good to know in advance. Then we may be more ex uh, uh, prone to accept it when it happens. As the man also said, we accept human are killing humans every day, but if a self-driving car kills a human, we would have an issue, right? Especially those guys who programmed the car. Um, anyway, we need to deal with uncertainty. You are taught the basic ideas of uncertainty in this class. Here it comes. Confidence intervals. It is almost a divine method. It's about quantifying the uncertainty of anything you compute. You should always ask yourselves, how certain am I that this is really the true number uh, representing what it's going to represent? We should always ask ourselves that question. If you as a manager in a company in a few years are gonna make decisions, it's pretty good to know the risk profiles of your million dollar investments or decisions that you make. So the only thing you can uh, be on top of that is by being on top of probability. When you're the manager, you would hire a good engineer, of course, to be on top of the probability or a few data scientists. Um, we estimate the mean, we compute the confidence interval. It's about this very old fashioned, but still relevant classic notion of population and random sample. We talk about sampling distributions. We meet the T and the chi-square distributions as sampling distributions for the mean, or rather the deviation between an, a mean and the truth, um, and the chi-square for the variance, right? Then we see sampling distributions are the theoretical distributions that puts uncertainty into distributions, right? The sampling distributions is our very operational specific tool to be intelligent about what we compute. That, th that relies on a bit of probability theory, right? How to get the right sampling distributions. That's what we don't prove in our class, that we, we accept that others prove this for us. Um, when we compute a mean, we have to think about how could it be different the next time, to repeat myself from that day. That's the sampling distribution. If we are on top of that, 
we are on top of the risk profile of what we are doing and, and how, what, how, much, how much value can we, can we uh, put on this mean for us, right? If we, if we know for certain it's, it's this value, then I'll put it high, but if it's like that, poof, um, I wouldn't invest a lot on, on such uh, situation. Central limit theorem tells us pretty magic thing again. If we have enough observations, then the normal distribution can be used for doing our statistical reasoning. Means follow as sampling distributions more and more. A normal distribution, by more and more I mean when n increases, right? Um, this is a pretty strong thing. It actually works for anything, but for very complicated models and very complicated nonlinear settings, maybe the n needs to be unrealistically large for the central limit theorem to work very well, and then we could still need other methods. Specific methods, confidence interval for one mean, confidence interval for the variance, two first methods that you met, a statistical inference method you met in this course. Actually, we need to do a little recap now. I forgot completely that I was going to play with you again. Of course, we should play also. This is our last time together, ever. <laughs> so, um, let's play. Are you ready? Do you want to play also today? So, let's play. Yes, let's get ready. Let's play. 13 questions. You may find that you saw some of these questions before now. I have high expectations to you now. Good start, everyone. Correct, I should do the dance, but I don't think I should anyway. Yeah. A few quick ones there. Next one. Eh? That was the easy part.
I must think. Otherwise, you need to be fast here to, to get on top of this. I'm asking about the standard deviation, and here in the blue is the formula for the binomial standard deviation, or I could say the binomial variance with a square root around it, um, which is the binomial standard deviation. So the number of baby boys in Denmark only varies, in, in average varies from 30K with uh, on average 122. Pretty stable supply of baby boys. Similarly so for baby girls, of course, but I had to choose one. We have a little catching up to do. Well, at, at least from a crowdsourcing perspective, you're right, right? Uh, yeah. Now I just have to check. This was question number. Can I see this here? This was question four. Why doesn't it tell me? But you were most likely right. So question three, four, five. I want to do one more now until we are up to speed where, where I was supposed to be. So one more now. Easy. C distribution, god damn it. <laughs> Maybe a normal, but not a C, right? Uh, anyway, there, there are still a few weeks to go. So you'll, you'll be okay, I'm sure. You'll be okay. Um, yeah. This was confidence intervals. And then we went on to hypothesis testing. 